Okay, so let's get started. What is programming? We're in programming for engineers. So what is programming? Programming is the act of making programs. So what does that mean exactly? Well, programs are files that when run, they do something. So this may be when we say run, we just mean like how you double click on Microsoft Word, you click on Firefox, Google Chrome, anything like that, just to open the application, right? So that's what we mean, run and do something. Well, this something is what your program is actually uh, composed of. So your programming is telling it what it's doing. It's doing something, what is that gonna be? So uh, there are a couple different ways of programming in general. Uh, first off, there's there's the more traditional, uh, and it's like written or typed, typed code. Uh, what what does this mean? This is something like you're defining variables. You're saying a equals one, b equals one, and c equals a plus b. It's just a general example of creating a typed program. Um, and we'll go into the specifics. If you, if this looks weird to you, strange, you've never, if you've seen something like Python, um, any sort of written typed programming language, you'll recognize this. But if you haven't, we'll go into it more detail in a second, but that's, that's one type. The other type is, is like a graphical. Um, so if I can type here, graphical means something like, uh, there are lots of different ones like this, but in general, they break down into either ladder or flow. So in a ladder, it just goes, they call them rungs, and you go one by one, you do the first rung, you do the second rung, and you do the third rung. And in this case, you just have a bunch of different operations. So uh, let's say on the first rung, you want to check is a on let's just say you have something that's on or off um like in an industrial application this may be something like an a is a level probe so is a uh you got some tank with water in it the probe a is right here and you're checking okay does this a is the water reached this point in this case it has it's filled up all the way to there so this would be true and then you want to turn on some other uh, variable, B, that you just run as a result. And you just go rung by rung. Uh, this is like a very simple operation. You probably wouldn't need to do this in a uh, graphical application, but just as an idea of how this works, you just go rung by rung and you perform a series of operations. Then you go to the next rung, perform a series of operations um, and so forth. So. The other example is like a flow. So this may be got some variable A and you want to add in B and you output to C. Uh, and you can see this epsilon here, short for uh, summary. And this is like one block to perform an operation for a sum. So you're just adding two things together, A and B, um, and you'd define these as some numbers. Let's say A is one, B is two. Then when you run this program, you'll get C is three. So those are two general graphical. Uh, in this class, we would primarily be focusing on typed. So this up here, but so that you have sort of an introduction. Uh, what does graphical look like? It get, typically, it's broken down into one of these. Um, so let's see what so how, how does this how does this actually work with the program what is what is this type or graphical whatever you're doing with the program what is happening here so um in this case typed we don't really have any input so typically a program goes by and you've got your inputs go into your program And this output something. 
So this program is what we're making, the inputs, uh, whatever, whoever's using your program will generate the inputs. This could be like, let's say you want something to happen when a button is clicked. So you got your mouse, you want a button to be pressed, the program then runs and it, let's say writes A to a file, just writes the character A um, as if you were typing it in a file. So that's very basic program. Um, in the typed, for example, right here, we don't really have any inputs. So what we do is we just, in the program, we're defining variables, uh, which you'll become very familiar with later if you're confused at all, just hold on a second there. Um, so we're defining variables, A is one, B is two, or B is one as well, and then we're constructing C equals A plus B, and then we'd probably output C right here. But we're not really using inputs, we're just defining everything we want inside the program, and this is just a very limited program. It, it only performs this one operation. Whereas we could use inputs A and B, like we did down here in this part, uh, with the more flow type programming. We define A and B, and then the program sums A and B, and it produces C, which is that summary. So this is the basic layout of a program. And just as you can use inputs in, in uh, graphical, you can also use inputs in types. So there's no reason we couldn't uh, do this A and B, no reason we couldn't make those inputs in a typed language. But this is just the overall, um, how, what is programming? How does a program get made? Basically you write some code uh, like this typed up here, or you use a program that allows you to input graphical code functioning the same way. Um, and it then generates a program that you can run and it may take some inputs. It may have everything interconnected within the program. So you don't need inputs um, and then create whatever outputs you want. Okay. So let's look at some example programs. You're all going to be familiar with using computers. We we've got programs. We got uh, whatever software you've got installed. So I've got Firefox. Maybe you've got Google Chrome. Whatever um, browser of choice you choose. There's also uh, lots of programs like in this class we'll be using MATLAB. So I'll pull that up real quick. This is a program somebody wrote to allow you to generate MATLAB code in a pretty easy manner. So this is just a program, this program to make programs was written in a program before. When we're introducing programming, we're just talking about making something like this, or even just running more simple, simple calculations like here. If we want to just add A and B together, that's pretty simple operation. So in this class, we'll primarily be focusing on doing simpler operations like computation. But this is a application. This is a program like you could use. Um, now, just a term to be familiar with here. Uh, this is a graphical user interface, meaning it's not just something you type. It's a uh, it's a full window here that you pull up on your computer, right? So graphical user interface just means uh, if I pull up Firefox, it's got um, it's got all these operations. I can interface with it with a mouse and keyboard, right? So that's that makes it a uh, GUI or GUI. So let's look at some other calcul uh, excuse me, programs. So if I pull up Windows Calculator, uh, I can perform basic operations. I can do 9 times 5, runs, computes, and it knows it's 45. So this is a basic program. Um, probably comes if you're running Windows, comes on your Windows. And it's just a GUI that's used to perform operations. By the end of this class, we'll be constructing a calculator, or you'll be able to choose a slightly different uh, application if you like, but we'll be doing something like creating a calculator um, or other GUI 
to allow a user to interface with it. So let them put in numbers or whatever, click buttons um, or type and then create outputs. So something like this is what you'll be able to do by the end of this class. Um, other programs, there's, there's lots, but let's pull up um, Blender. Blender is another program that you could, somebody writ this, wrote this by, uh, by using programming. So you, you'll be able to do something like this. This is an extremely complicated program. It took a lot of people to write it, but the animation. <clears throat> and this is a very complicated animation program. So I can just like form a bunch of operations that's taking in these inputs of my mouse clicks. I can then switch. It's got a different section down here to allow you to control the animation more. I'll just make some changes. And now with this application, I'm able to do a little bit of animation. Um, another program that you could make. So this is the sort of stuff, hopefully you are sort of excited about the possibilities of what you're able to do with programming, but that's the intention here is to kind of introduce that. Um, there are also more uh, extremely functional programs. So Cruise a Slicer uh, is a slicing engine that you're able to use if you're doing like 3D printing. Um, you're able to set it up so that you can input a 3D model into your uh, this little window here and scale it, place it how you want, and then it will be able to run and construct the G code that lets you create the actual print on your 3D printer. So none of that has to, you don't need to know what G code is or anything, but just this is something that somebody had a need. They had a 3D model, they wanted to 3D print it. So they were able to use programming to construct this program to output this file that they can use on their 3D printer. So pretty cool. Um, there's also something that may interest interest more of you is oops, double click here. Games. So I won't pull up like any AAA games or anything, but if I pull up a basic basic game here, you've got reseller. Triple when I clicked on pyramid. So this is a, again, a GUI GUI that just takes in inputs. You can click on stuff. I'm not gonna actually do anything here, but you can click. It'll, it will, depending on how you click, sometimes use mouse presses, uh, or sometimes you use, use click with the mouse. Sometimes you uh, type with your keyboard, but you're able to do operations like this with a GUI. Um, so yeah, there's so many possibilities, which is hopefully a little bit exciting. Okay, now let's go into a another example, a program that you might make in this class. Uh, this will be a little bit beyond the scope of this class, but this is the sort of skills you can get to with a little bit of programming. So I created this program. I wanted to have sort of a image editor for myself. Um, and the way I did it, I wanted it to do very specific things for me. So I wanted, I created a file. Uh, this is the programming uh, written here to create the program right here. Um, or excuse me, I'm using this program, but Right here, I've just got Python, which we'll start into in this class, but got Python and I've written all this code and it allows me to make and edit pictures. So this is a lot of code um, and it, it's even relatively short. It's got a thousand lines, but uh, this is pretty short for like a real application sort of thing. So what I wanted to be able to do with this is if I pull this up real quick, I had this image I just created real quick. Um, 
just a little diagram of like some building. And I wanted to be able to uh, extricate from this information. So it's it's kind of on a fuzzy background. It's got uh, this text and the drawing. And I really want only the uh, drawing to stand out. I kind of want to eliminate this texture. So I'm just going to go through. And what my program does is it looks at this file, uh, sees all throughout this, if it's a dark enough pixel, uh, if this place in the image is dark enough, then I'll extract it and it'll be, uh, I'll make a black and white image of this that only has the dark spots, basically is the intention. So when I run this program, I'm able to get this out. I'm able to extract uh, some of the information. You can see now it's black and white. Uh, and anywhere in the original image that it was dark enough, it now produces a black spot there. Anywhere it was not that dark, uh, it not dark enough for whatever limit I did, um, it creates a white spot. So if I, if I go back to my program and I change, uh, I think it's right here. If I change this to 250, now I will run this program. And when I run this, it creates a fully white image. So it's got too high of a threshold. But if I go back and edit this a little bit. So this is one where you aren't really having uh, inputs. You're putting your inputs into your program so that you don't have to have a user edit it run this and now I get a, it's a higher threshold so it cuts out uh, some of the spots in the background but it doesn't quite get all of the text so this is a trade-off because I'm using such a basic little uh, filter here I get I can only get so close but that that's the idea is that you can construct a program to do whatever you want really you can edit images you can uh, make games, you can do all sorts of stuff. All right, something else cool just to get you excited. If any of you have heard of Dolly, so Dolly is a program uh, made by OpenAI, and basically what it does is it takes a text input. So in this case, we are using an input, we're uh, making it for other users to have a pretty flexible program. So we have an input of text from a user and it constructs uh, an, a set of images from that text, uh, trying to sort of predict what the user is hoping for. So let's see an example. So let's see text prompt. Uh, what they're inputting to Dali is the text and it's an illustration of a baby daikon radish. I think that's daikon in a tutu walking a dog. And it was able to produce these images, uh, which is pretty cool. That's sort of exciting that we're able to do that with programming nowadays. Um, another text prompt, an armchair in the shape of an avocado. And he's able to produce these images. A uh, storefront that has the word OpenAI written on it. Bunch of options here, pretty cool. The exact same cat as the top, the exact same cat on the top as a sketch on the bottom. And it just creates, uh, these are a little wonky looking, but you can see a cat uh, with a sketch of a cat on the bottom. So pretty amazing. Um, so hopefully that gets you a little bit excited. Uh, in civil and mechanical engineering, we're not typically as into the programming. We like physical model, we like the physics, we like the um, the modeling, sometimes we do thermodynamics. And so this may not have been super into in your wheelhouse of what you expected to go into with uh, engineering, mechanical or civil, but uh, but there's a lot of a lot of possibility and there's a lot of use for programming in mechanical and civil. So hopefully, you're excited.
All right, now let's get into the next step of this. So uh, you probably don't have MATLAB installed right now. If you do, great. But in either case, let's open Notepad. See here, pull up Notepad on my computer. And we're just going to write in some text that we'll use later in this class. So if you'll just type with me A equals 1, semicolon, B equals 2, semicolon, C equals A plus B, semicolon, and disp, open parentheses, C, close parentheses. Let me zoom in here. So go ahead and type this and then save this on your computer. Just save as and put it in a, uh, if you got a folder for the class already, just put it inside that and name it uh, test.m. And we'll, we'll use this in class. We'll pull it up and we'll actually run this. This is code that will run in MATLAB. Um, and if you're on a different operating system in Mac, you'll you'll use text edit. You won't use Notepad. If you're on Linux, you can use get it. Uh, you can use whatever, but don't use a. You don't want to use a document creator like uh, Word or LibreOffice um, because that doesn't create a text file. Uh, that will create a doc file or whatever. So we want to use a program like Notepad that will directly use uh, or directly output to a text file. So when I save as, I go to documents in GR 1030 and I'm gonna name this test. And instead of .txt, I do .m. So I just click all files down here, save. And now I've got this and we can use it for next class. So try and do that uh, and then we can move to the next step.